everyone, welcome back. Last week, we showed you 12 productivity experiments we've conducted. And today, we'll show you how you can set up your own. Over the years, we've done a bunch of productivity experiments. We've measured our productivity working at standing desks, sitting on yoga balls, and listening to ASMR. And we've tested popular productivity tips and time management techniques and made our conclusions on their actual efficiency. This video is a six-step guide on how you can quickly set up your own productivity experiment. By the end of this video, you'll be equipped to discover which time management and productivity techniques make you more productive and which don't, test new tools and gadgets to see if they save you time and are worth using in the future, share your findings with your team and clients, and even get some free press coverage. Our articles featuring findings from our experiments have appeared in media and blogs like Mashable, Trello, Glassdoor, The Daily Muse, The Ladders, and many more. Keep watching because at the end of this video, we'll show you how you can get your productivity experiment published in top tier media. But first, here's how you set up your productivity experiment with desk time. Step one, define a question or come up with a hypothesis. The first step is to understand what you want to test or what question you want to answer. There are two ways you can approach this. One, you can start with a hypothesis. Generally, a hypothesis is an assumption that you can either approve or reject with the help of the data. For example, you can assume that you'll be more productive when working at a standing desk, measure your productivity before and during using one, and finally, come up with a conclusion of whether or not your assumption was correct or not. Number two, you can start with a specific question and an open mind. For example, you could be asking, does this time management tool make my team more efficient than using that time management tool? How does my team's productivity change if we provide them with new ergonomic chairs? What happens if we turn on some background music in the office? And does music genre matter? So in this case, you'd be defining a question and approach the data collection without any assumptions or hypotheses. As you have your question or hypothesis in mind, move to step two, set up your data collection tool, or in other words, sign up and install desk time. An important part of conducting a successful experiment is having a tool that collects data that you can use afterward to make conclusions and answer the question posed in the beginning. For a productivity experiment, DeskTime is an excellent data collection tool. DeskTime is an automatic productivity tracking app, where automatic means that it turns on and off itself as you start or turn off your computer. What's more, it also automatically collects information on what programs, websites, and apps you use during the day, which you can categorize into productive or unproductive. Once you've done that, DeskTime calculates your average daily productivity. That allows you to collect data on you or your team's productivity and conclude things like changes in productivity before and during the experiment, and whether the tested tool or technique is or is not effective for you, how many hours a day, week, or month you spend on certain websites or apps, for example, social media sites, and more. Now that you have a data collection tool in place, there's one more thing you need to do before you start your experiment, which is step three, isolate other variables. Before you start collecting data to test your hypothesis or answer your question, it's important that you isolate all other variables or obstacles that could affect your results. That is, make sure that your data isn't affected by other changes in the company or work environment. For example, don't try to test ergonomic chairs and standing desks at the same time and on the same people, because at the end of the experiment, you won't be able to know which one of the variables has affected the results and made you more or less productive. When all other variables are isolated, you can move forward to step four, collect your data. So at this point, you have a question you want to answer or, or a hypothesis that you want to test, a tool to collect data, desk time, all other variables excluded to make sure that they don't mess up your findings. The next step is to start collecting data. That means from a set day, you activate the variable you've decided to test, whether that be music in the office, a standing desk, or new project management software, start collecting data. The good thing about desk time is that it starts tracking and measuring as soon as you turn on your computer. So all data collection will happen automatically without any input needed from you or your employees. Let the experiment run for at least a few weeks to make sure your findings are representative. Once the experiment has come to an end, move to the next step, which is step five, analyze your data and come to a conclusion. As you've finalized your data collection, it's time to analyze them and make conclusions. Go to your desk time account and set the dates that the experiment was live for, for the people it applied to, which could be an individual, a team, or the whole company, then export the data or take a screenshot. Then set the same amount of days before the experiment began and export or screenshot those results as well. This will give you a before and after view. Now, 
Ask yourself a set of questions. Was your hypothesis correct? What is the answer to the question you posed in the beginning? Are you able to answer the question with the data collected? Can you observe any trends in the collected data? Did you encounter any unexpected data? As you analyze your data, remember that no findings are also findings. We once tested whether people are more productive in open offices or closed office environments. Our data showed that there, in fact, was no difference in productivity no matter what type of office people worked in. That is, even though we didn't find any differences in productivity, we could still put our collected data to use to challenge the popular assumption that open plan offices make people less productive. So, as you analyze your data, stay open-minded and ask yourself, can I use them to support or challenge popular assumptions? Step six, share your findings. The final step is to, figuratively speaking, put your findings on paper and share them with others, your colleagues, clients, or the general public via media publications. As we mentioned in the beginning, some of our experiments have landed in media, and we often get asked how exactly we made that happen. Our approach has always been writing an article and then approaching different publications with it. How do you make your article compelling to read and interesting for the media? Here are a few tips. Tie your finding with a general trend or hot topic. For example, that's what we did when we were writing the piece for Trello on the productivity of open plan offices. There were, and still are, huge discussions on whether open plan offices are good or bad for productivity, and with our findings, we were able to provide additional insight and participate in this discussion. Present your findings right at the beginning of your piece. Remember that readers are impatient, so reveal your cards right in the beginning to keep them reading. Provide your analysis of the data. Don't make readers think, and explain the data yourself. To help people understand your findings better, use examples and previous research, which will provide readers with context. Remember, the better your findings are understood, the bigger are the chances that people will want to share them with others. Add images, graphics, and screenshots from your desk time account to visualize your results. For one, because images make articles more lively and eye-catching. And two, by using screenshots from desk time, you'll make your conclusions A, easier to understand when compared to only describing them in text, and B, provide people with visual proof of your conclusions. It's like saying, don't just take our word for it, see for yourself. And that's it. This is how you set up and conduct a productivity experiment with desk time and write a story that the media wants to publish. What is your first productivity experiment with desk time going to be? Will you test a certain hypothesis or start with a question and open mind? Let us know what you're going to test first in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We publish a new video every week with actionable, no bullshit tips on productivity, team management, and business growth. So join other entrepreneurs growing their business with desk time and push that subscribe button now. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you soon.